Hey guys, what's up? We're back today for another live in the UU tier. We're going to be using a team that I saw on PokeMMD's Subhub episode. I'll leave the link down in the, in the description for you guys to check out that video. This is one of the teams he used in, uh, in the UU tier, and it, it makes a lot of sense. It's got a, a lot of crazy good mons. Here we have a Pixie Plate Sylveon, which hits incredibly hard being modest and max attack. And uh, just enough speed to, I can't remember what this outspeeds exactly, but it's, uh, it's a really good speed tier regardless. <laughs> we'll figure it out, I guess. Uh, hidden Power Fire to hit Fortress and things like that. Uh, we also have a uh, an Empoleon. This thing is actually really bulky as well. That's why I'm carrying uh, Wish Protect on it. It's, that's the set that came with it. So uh, We have Empoleon here. Life Orb Agility, Flash Cannon, Ice Beam, and Hydro Pump. This thing is an endgame sweeper. So good. Uh, then we have Mega Bomb of Snow here with Blizzard, Giga Drain, Earthquake, Ice Shard. Puts on a lot of pressure on things like Salamence. Uh, basically anything that can't really take a Giga Drain, such as Crocodile, like our next Mon here. Uh, we have a Leftovers Crocodile with a good amount of defense investment, a little bit of speed once again. Uh, 239, I believe, is the same as base 70s um, max speed non-jolly, so or non-timid, so that's pretty good. Uh, then we have uh, Chandelure here, carrying Substitute, Calm Mind, Shadow Ball, and Flamethrower, Standard Stall Breaker, Chandelure, and Gligar carrying Defog, Earthquake, U-Turn, and Roost. Uh, ability Hypercutter, because uh, you can't have immunity with uh, with Roost, I think, or Defog, I think it is. So yeah, that's pretty much the set. Uh, good team overall. I like using it, so let's, uh, let's get a couple of games and see how well we do. Uh, this guy's got a Steelix, which is a little bit of an issue, but I I mean, we have Chandelure and Crocodile, so we should be able to deal with it. Uh, says, have fun. Same to you, my friend. And uh, we'll just jump right into it. I think I'm going to lead with Chandelure because it counters his Zatu and his Sableye pretty well. So we'll do that. If he wants to go into Umbreon, it's not too big of an issue. We'll deal with it when it comes. Uh, we're running Flamethrower over Fire Blast because of missing, <laughs> basically. And Flash Fire boosts uh, if ever you come in on Fire Moves. Uh, pretty much mitigate that so um, now that I'm looking at it this is might not have been the best lead in the world uh, just because he can knock me off so um, what I'm actually gonna do is I think I'm gonna go into a bomb of snow here doesn't have the best defense but it can fire off a huge blizzard followed up by a giga drain if he wants to go into Suicune uh, that I might have actually been my best lead but uh, I'm gonna go into it I'm gonna switch directly into it hopefully on a knockoff or something like that as he chooses to go for a knockoff, so that's great. We'll be able to get off... Uh, he has leftovers, so we'll be able to get off a huge blizzard right here on anything that wants to come in once again. Uh, don't know how well Embryon takes it. Probably takes about 40%, so... Uh, he's going to try to go for a Will-O-Wisp. Unfortunately, he misses, but we are special, so that doesn't really matter entirely. The freeze, however, does matter. <laughs> that's pretty big. Um, I'm going to drop a sorry. He, uh, he's laughing it off, but... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty big turn. <coughs> I'm just going to go for another Blizzard. He's going to keep his Sableye as fodder, I assume. Uh, he's going to Blizzard the uh, the Umbreon right there, as we said. It does about 40, uh, 37 on that hit, so uh, not too much damage. I'd really like to go into Sylveon right here. Uh, he can wish, but Sylveon's just overall, I think, the best play. Um, well, actually, I'll Blizzard on this turn on his wish, and then on his Protect, I'll go for uh, the switch into Sylveon, put up the pressure. He can switch into his Steelix at any time, that's perfectly fine, but uh, I want to weaken that thing as much as possible to be able to hit and power fire it later. And uh, the um, the Blizzard, the Hail, is going to go away that turn, so we're going to be able to get off a free uh, Hyper Voice right here. He is going to sack his Sableye on that turn, I don't completely agree with that. He has a Steelix that he can go into, it would have taken nothing from a Hyper Voice, so maybe he just didn't want to risk that I was, uh, hidden, uh, was Specs hidden power fire. That's a possibility, but... On this thing, I can pretty safely go into Crocodile. He can set up his rocks if he wants to. And uh, he is going to Mega Evolve and just Earthquake me flat out. So not too bad. I kind of want to predict the Zatu to come in here on the Stealth Rocks and just go for a knockoff. Uh, at the same time... Yeah, no, that's not a terrible play. He is at minus one, so he won't be able to hit us too hard. And I can get Umbreon's uh, item off if he chooses to go into that. So he actually chooses to go into Chestnut. Not bad at all for us. We get rid of his leftovers, so it's going to be a lot easier to whittle down. Uh, on this thing, I can just cleanly switch into Chandelure. You might want to get up a layer of Spikes. Again, that's fine. We have Gligar on the back to defog them away later. So he goes for a Leech Seed. Good play on his part. Um, but at this point, I think I'm just... Do I start setting up Calm Minds now? Um, no. Uh, I'm actually just going to double into Sylveon here. 
in case he has a, I don't know, sub or a spiky shield. And, and I don't want Umbreon coming in for free either, or Suicune for that matter. So just going to go straight into Sylveon. Uh, I want to calc really quickly how much Sylveon's um, max attack. Let's say specs, but we'll take off the specs because that's basically what we are. And, uh, well, we need to put on a pixie plate, right? So let's find that. Pixie... Where's Pixie Plate? There it is. And uh, we're going to go Suicune, uh, Yu Yu Roarcoon, for example. We actually hit it for over 50%, so that's really good. Uh, we are going to double it into Sylveon. He is going to go into his Umbreon right there, so that's perfect. Uh, we can get off a huge Hyper Voice on something. Obviously, like we said before, Steelix won't be taking too much. Uh, I think he thinks I'm Specs, so I'm actually going to fire off a Hidden Power Fire here, predicting his Steelix to want to come in. Um... That's what he should go into. And he does, so we're going to get off this in Power Fire. And it's going to do 29%. Uh, any damage is good damage. And uh, what do I do with this thing? I kind of want to go in Polion. At the same time, Earthquake. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, we'll go... You know what? We'll go back into Crook here. As uh, he doesn't seem to think that his Zatu is a good switch to me, so... Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go for a... I'm going to go for my rocks here. Because he already got his up anyway, so it doesn't matter if he switches into Zatu. It's not like I'm losing anything. Uh, as he actually goes into his chestnut once again. Perfectly fine. And uh, what do I want to do here? Probably a bomb of snow, right? Because I'll... Uh, he might drain punch on this turn. I don't really want to risk that. Um... I mean, Chandelure is the best switch every time, and we are leftovers, so it's not like the rocks matter too much as uh, he is going to go for a layer of spikes right now. And now I feel like I can start Calm Minding up. Uh, if you didn't have two or, uh, two other more likely rockers. Yeah, uh, well, you'll see later. <laughs> he says, I genuinely would have uh, gone Zatu if you didn't have two or more other likely rockers. Um, I can see his thought process on that. Uh, at the same time, my crook is intimidating in leftovers, so it it's pretty likely that it, it would carry stealth rocks. So I'm just gonna get a calm mind up there. I'm gonna go for flamethrower on this thing just to see how much it does. It does 42, which isn't bad at all. It's gonna go for a foul play. Obviously, the next one would take me out, uh, but I'm gonna go for flamethrower right now. Just knock this thing down to 10%. He's gonna foul play and kill me. Uh, but now his Umbreon can't even switch on on any one of my Pokemon. So um, is he faster than Gligar? Probably not. No. So we'll go uh, Sylveon right here, and uh, my rocks are up, so I'm pretty free to just fire off a Hyper Voice right here. Again, I don't care if he goes Steelix, doesn't really matter. His Steelix doesn't have any kind of res residual recovery, so I'm just going to fire off another Hyper Voice right now. Hopefully he predicts uh, Hidden Power Fire and doesn't switch out. I would love to get rid of this Umbreon right now, and we'll see what he does. So... What would be a good switch for him here? I think uh, I think Steelix is just the all-around best switch every time. What's good is that if his Steelix does come out, first of all, I'm getting off a huge hit on this thing. Uh, that's going to do 24 regardless of being resisted. So here, I'm not in danger of him going for rocks, because he already did. So I'm just going to go for a protect just to see what he wants to do. As he's going to go for Heavy Slam, so that's a pretty free Crocodile right there. And uh, I'm pretty sure Crook takes like, what, 15 from this? Not much at all after the Intimidate. As he's going to go for it again. He's actually going to do a little bit more than I anticipated, but now I can... I don't expect him to go Zatu, so I'm just going to fire off an Earthquake as he chooses to go back into Chestnut. Again, any damage on this thing is good, um, but he is wearing down my team. Uh, what I want to do is actually... Do I want to get rid of the rocks right away? You can set them back up. So, no. Um, at this point, Sylveon beats Steelix. Uh, as soon as I hit Hyper Voice, so... I'm pretty safe to go back into it. Alternatively, I can go into Obama Snow, because now it takes out his... Um, his Umbreon, but I don't really want to go into it before the, my rocks are gone on my side, so... Uh, I also don't want him leech seeding me. So I am going to go with Papa Snow here. Hopefully he doesn't go for Drain Punch. That would be really bad. Um, as he chooses to go for leech seed. So I'm immune. And now I can fire off a very big blizzard. 
Uh, obviously, he's faster than me. Let's see if he actually has Drain Punch, though. And if it takes me out, because I'm pretty defensive. And if he's defensive Chestnut, then there goes Sylveon. Awesome. Okay. So now his Zatu comes in. Again, this thing is faster than me. Uh, the question is, do I just want to get off an Ice Shard here? Is he going to be able to take me out? Probably with an Air Slash. Um, yeah. I don't know if I want to do that just yet. Uh, I'm going to go Gligar here and get rid of the uh, the hazards as he's just going to side shock me he's gonna get a crit there doesn't really matter uh, I'm just gonna defog because this thing can't really touch me it does have calm mind um, it's a little bit scary is he faster than me he is so I can just go for a u-turn here and I can u-turn directly into my crocodile and then hit him up with a uh, with a knockoff and uh, I mean we already knocked off chestnuts item so it's not that great but Alternatively, I could go Empoleon here, but he does have a Calm Mind up. Yeah, I have to hit him on the physical side. So, um, he's still probably faster than me, and he has Giga Drain. It's a little bit scary. I think we can live it, though, even a plus one Giga Drain. So he's just going to switch out into his Chestnut again, and now I have no Hazards up on my side, so... Now I feel like he would go for a Fighting move, because he saw me switch into into my Obama Snow before. He actually goes for Seed Bomb, which does a hell of a lot. Uh, just going to fire off a Hyper Voice here and finally get rid of this Chestnut, which is awesome. We don't have to deal with it anymore. Uh, he can still set up Rocks, but he can't set up Spikes, which is great. That means Crocodile comes in for free pretty much every time, especially on this thing. Uh, I'm going to go into it, and what I'm going to do right here uh, is I'm actually... No, I can just Taunt the Suicune. So I'm pretty free to... Just go for EQ here. Uh, he goes into his Zatu, but now I can knock off. If he wants to keep doubling, that's fine. He does take the knockoff, but now he is in range of another one. So I'm just going to go for that, and that's going to be a dead Zatu. So no more magic bounce either, which means now I can get back up my rocks. On this thing, I'm just going to taunt, just to keep it from setting up on me, because uh, that would be a big problem. And uh, he can't go for Calm Mind right there, and he drops an O. In good game. Uh, well, not yet. Um, I'm just going to let him know that I haven't won yet, but uh, it's looking pretty good for me, so I'm just going to knock off here. Hopefully, he doesn't burn me with the Scald because he shouldn't take me out with one. Uh, and he does not, so we're going to be able to get off an Earthquake here. And then followed up by either going into Sylveon because his taunt is down, or a Bomb of Snow, but again, the rocks are up. So I kind of have to go into Sylveon here. It's okay because Empoleon can finish off the game between Hydro Pump and and whatnot, so I'll just throw off a Hyper Voice here. We already know how much it does. We calculated it before. It does 49 to 57, so it's never going to take him out, but it's going to drop him to about 10%, and we outspeed Steelix, so he would have to go for a rest right here um, just to... Well, he's actually faster than my Sylveon. That's strange. Why am I EV'd so low? Um, again, he can go for... We're fast though, right? We're faster than this? We are. Um, problem is he can go for a rest now. Would he though? That's the question. I think he would just fire off a Scald, right? No, he's, he's going to rest anyway. We're going to take off 35% from this thing. And uh, I'm still susceptible to losing. So, watch out. <laughs> this thing can still uh, sleep talk a Scald right now. And that would be really bad. Or even a Calm Mine. I needed to sleep talk a rest twice basically and I still need to crit him uh, actually no 35% I'm good I'm good I'm good uh, I just need to dodge two scalds basically um, and I think if, even if he gets a calm mind after the first one I can still potentially knock him out let's see at plus two special defense here I'm just gonna calc that real quick uh, plus two hyper voice is doing a max of 29 so maybe not um, he gets uh, what did he get that turn I guess I need a favorable sleep roll, followed by a first turn burn, or... Uh, did he even go for... He didn't seem to go for uh, for sleep talk there. And uh, that's pretty much just going to be GG, so... Uh, yeah, uh, I guess he didn't have sleep talk. Maybe he was Roar. That's it's a strange set, but... Uh, so we picked up that win anyway. I'm not going to argue about it. Let's just move on into the next game. Hopefully there's a few people playing UU right now. Uh, let's actually check that really quickly. Uh, how many battles we got here? We got 48, so it might take a couple of seconds. I'll actually just, uh, 
I'll pause it. Oh no, we got one. Okay, good. Uh, so this guy's got a Mega Absol, a Frostlass, a very threatening team, basically. But he doesn't have very good switch-ins to Sylveon, once again. This is why this thing is so strong in this tier. Uh, it can just plow through teams. As soon as I weaken his floor, just even just a little bit, like 20 or 30% off of it, Hyper Voice is going to do so much damage. Pixie Plate boosted, so. Um, on this guy, I want to lead with... Um, let's see here. Do I want to lead Crook? I'm pretty much expecting the Frost last lead. That's pretty obvious. Um, but can Frost last? Yeah, it can definitely hit me with a Shadow Ball if it's carrying it. Frost last is scary to this team, man. I'm kind of forced to lead with Empoleon in this game. Because he does lead with the Frost last, that's great. Uh, we're going to get off a of Flash Cannon right here. Hopefully he's taunt i think yeah these things carry taunt we're gonna hit it up with a flash cannon it's gonna bring it down to its sash uh, now it's gonna be able to destiny bond but um if i go into a bomb snow and then i i shard him i think i dodged that right i think so yeah i'm gonna go a bomb snow here get up the hail and he is gonna destiny bond that's great and uh, I don't know how the mechanics of Destiny Bond work when you go for a priority move the turn after. Um, but I don't think it's still intact. Let's see. Let's just go for it. I mean, I don't really need a Bomb of Snow anyway. So if we do go down, then we go down. And we do. So that's a little unfortunate. But now I know for, for future reference. Uh, I'm just going to go Crook here because it handles the majority of his team pretty well. As you can see, Entei is now at minus one. So it's not going to appreciate taking an Earthquake. I pretty much expect Cresselia to come out here. Uh, but I'm just going to go for my Rocks as his Crest does come out. And now we can fire off a... I'm thinking Taunt. Because uh, I don't want to give Lucario the attack boost. Uh, yeah, I'd rather go for Taunt here. And see what he wants to go into. So Hail would have been nice this game to, to whittle down the floor just and whatnot, but uh, we're going to get a taunt off on this thing so I can't go for Calm Mind, and I'm just going to knock its item off. And basically at that point, Chandelure can handle it. He can Moonblast me right here, that'd be fine. It's not going to even come close to taking me out, it's going to do like 50. Uh, he is going to go for Moonblast, yeah, you see 44 right there. Uh, it does lower my special attack, oh god, no, my Earth, my earth power. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go into Chandelure here. And uh, pretty much wall this thing out. It's Moonblast is doing absolutely nothing to us. He can definitely Calm Mind up alongside me now. But it's going to be a losing war for him. Because my special attack is higher than his special defense. So, I mean, I'm pretty free to sub here, actually. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. He's going to go out into Florges. And I, I'm pretty sure I win this war behind a sub. So, I'm just going to Calm Mind up here. His Moonblast will not be able to break my sub because I resist it. So... Uh, he has to have some other alternative form of coverage to be able to take me out. Let's see what he wants to go for. He goes for Moonblast. That's going to be resisted, and I'm going to take that no problem. I'm just going to fire off another Calm Mind here. I'm pretty free to just set up all over this thing and proceed to win the game. So he goes into Absol. Uh, we're going to be able to knock this thing out with a Flamethrower. Uh, he just wanted to break the sub, I guess, but he's going to lose his Mega Absol in the process, which is great. And uh, we'll work from there. Again, every time Cresselia comes in, Chandelure is my immediate switch. Uh, he obviously has Psy Shock, so we actually outspeed the Absol before Mega Evolution. So he should have definitely gone for a Sucker Punch there to at least break the sub, if that's what he was aiming for. He's going to forfeit that one, so he couldn't handle the pressure of Chandelure. So that's going to that's gonna wrap up another game. We're going to be able to get a third one, unlike uh, yesterday's episode. Uh, I had to cut that stall. Uh, that stall game a little short and then we only had two other battles after that because they were pretty lengthy about nine or ten minutes each so uh so yeah we're gonna uh we're gonna be able to get a third battle here hopefully keep the episode about 25 26 minutes and uh yeah we'll see what we get i'll, I'll pause it until we get one because like i said there's not a lot of battles on the ladder right now so uh see you guys in a bit all right guys and we got one and uh once again another guy with a frost last so that pretty much means i have to lead empoleon <laughs> Um, just to, uh, how do we want to play this actually? Um, you know, it really sucks not having anything to be able to outspeed his Frostlass. Like that's, that's this team's biggest weaken weakness is its speed. Uh, it's pretty good defensively, but he's actually going to lead with Machamp, which is really unfortunate. Uh, cause he can go for a knockoff here if he chooses to. What's my best pivot on this thing? I don't want to get knocked off, and I don't want to get dynamic punched either. 
So I think I kind of have to scout for the dynamic punch right here. Uh, he's going to go for it. And now he's probably more than likely going to go for a knockoff. So do I just switch in Crook on that and get up my rocks? Rocks are pretty good this game because they weaken the Kirim, the Frostlass, and the Darmanitan on his side uh, very heavily. And they also weaken the Ampharos and break Donphan's sturdy. So I'm definitely going to go Crook here on the knock. Uh, I believe this thing gets knockoff, right? Okay, he goes for Stone Edge instead. Alright, so that's not too bad. Uh, I want to know how much Crocodile does to this thing. Because uh, we're definitely going down to a Dynamic Punch, right? Maybe at min maybe not at minus one. Machamp. Oh, you, you Assault Vest. Versus uh, Crook. Choice Band. We'll say Choice Band, but we're not Choice Band. Obviously, this is not doing as much. Uh, if he's minus one, is this one Intimidate? It is. Whoa, okay, that's still doing a heck of a lot. But wait, we're Defensive Crook. So he shouldn't be able to take me out, actually. Uh, UU Non-Choice Attacker. Uh, Dread Plate, wow, okay. Uh, but we're like 252 and 180, I believe. An Impish, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so his dynamic punch is actually not doing that much. So I'm pretty free to Earthquake right here. And got off a lot of damage on this thing as he goes for dynamic. And it does 55. So if we can break through the confusion, we can still kill this thing. But we have to break through the confusion. <laughs> That's the problem. Luckily, everything that he has is grounded. So he can't really switch into the Earthquake either. He can go into his Dawn Fan. But if I snap out of conf confusion immediately, that just means I get up my rocks. Or I get off a knockoff on his Dawn Fan. And get rid of its uh, leftover. So he is going to switch into Dawn Fan. Uh, we are going to be able to get the next EQ off. And uh, we are at 35%. Which means being faster than his, uh, his Machamp is really good. Uh, what I'm going to do here is go into my Obama Snow as I resist pretty much anything he wants to throw at me other than a Stone Edge. He goes for rocks and this is the freest blizzard uh, that I have ever seen. Pretty much hits everything on his team minus Darmanitan for super effective damage and Darmanitan's pretty fa frail so it might as well be super effective damage. You'll see the amount that comes off of this thing so he's actually really really ice weak. So I definitely want to keep Obama Snow alive. But he does have two ice steps, so it's going to be hard to get rid of these rocks with uh, with uh, Gligar. But I can always uh, I can always switch it in on Darmanitan's Flare Blitz, so it's not too bad. Going to go for a Blizzard on the Frost Last. Going to do a little bit of damage, and I'm actually going to go for another one right here as he goes for Taunt, which is great. Now Blizzard hits for a lot of damage. How much does Ice Shard hit for? Because we only have 302 attack. Let's see. A Bomb of Snow. Bomb of Snow. I feel like this is what makes my episodes longer. <laughs> uh, let's see, Mega Obama Snow, Barack Obama, I guess. Uh, but we're not that much attack, we're only 308. I know we have a sum investment. Do we? Do we even have any? No, we're, are we negative? Um, I guess we're negative nature, guys. Uh, <laughs> modest. Uh, yeah, we're, but we're modest with like attack investment. What is this set? Um, 132, we'll do one... We'll do 152, I guess. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, so it's actually 144. There we go. And uh, against Frostlass. Uh, Frostlass. You use Spike Sleet. How much does Ice Shard do? Not enough. Not enough at all. Um, I'm going to fire it off anyway. And we get a crit on that. So that's actually really unfortunate for him. Because he would have definitely been able to live that mine barring the crit. So... I mean, now it's a free switch into his Machamp, but his Machamp can no longer take a Flamethrower or a Shadow Ball. Uh, well, more likely Flamethrower from um, from Chandelure. So if he wants to go to, uh, for Dynamic Punch, he's going to have to really think about it. He actually chooses to go into his Kirim here. I'm pretty sure I can live any one hit from it. Um, let's see. Kirim. Let's say Specs. UU Choice Specs. Uh, Focus Blast. Focus Blast definitely takes me out. So that's if he Specs, though. Um, I'm pretty free to go into Sylveon here, I think. And if he goes for a nice move, then we'll act accordingly. But uh, let's see. I'm going to Sylveon. He goes for a Flash Cannon. Wow, that was actually a really good play on his part. Um, now, do I switch into Empoleon or Chandelure? Empoleon, I think, has more special defense. And it takes less rock damage. So 
Uh, I definitely want to keep my Sylveon alive because it still gets off Hyper Voices on his Dawn Fan and on his Ampharos, I believe. So I'm just going to go into Empoleon here. Uh, Flash Cannon is going to do very little, as you can see. And I can actually go for my own Flash Cannon here and uh, really weaken something. Um, yeah, that's what, exactly what I'm going to do. He chooses to go into Ampharos. So, obviously, if he Mega Evolves, hold on a second. Empoleon... Empoleon, Empoleon, UU Agility versus... This is... I'm Life Orb. Hold on a second. Life Orb. Where are you, Life Orb? There you are. Uh, give me Flash Cannon. And give me Ice Beam. Ice Beam we have. Okay, I didn't need Flash Cannon, but... Doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just work with that. So UU Physically Defensive. Ice Beam doesn't do enough. Um... And I can't really lose this thing, can I? Because or else his Kirim can just spam dragon moves on my team. Because Sylveon's already weakened. Um, gonna go into Gligar here. And he's going to fire off a... Hopefully a Volt Switch. I think he basically has to. No, he goes for Dragon Pulse. So I could have stayed in and Ice Beamed him twice and, and killed him. But uh, as you can see, that's not doing much at all. Uh, I am just going to defog these rocks away. If he wants to go into his Dawn Fan, that's perfectly fine. He's not going to Earthquake me anyway. And I'll get a free switch back into my Obama Snow. And then just start Blizzarding again. So uh, he is going to go directly into his Kirim. And at this point... <sighs> is Crook... No, Crook's not useless. Um, what do I want to do here? Do I want to let Gligar to go down? I mean, if he goes for a Dragon move, then I go into Sylveon and I just Hyper Voice something. So, or I can wish. So I'm going to Roost as he goes for Focus Blast, which is awesome. So now we're even going to be able to get off a U-turn on this thing or whatever else he wants to bring in because there's no way he's staying in if he specs. And that looks like specs damage, 22.2%, definitely. He goes into Dawn Fan, I get off a U-turn, and now I can just bring back in Empoleon, honestly. Uh, does Obama Snow outspeed this? No. Um, yeah, definitely going into Empoleon here. And uh, I'm just firing off a Hydro Pump because I don't want to mess around with this thing. I think it, it might actually live an Ice Beam. So we'll just Ice Beam the Ampharos when it comes out anyway. Uh, we do get off the Hydro Pump. That's a dead Dawn fan. And now he can no longer get up rocks. And if we get ours up, then he can't spin them away either. So that's great. Uh, we should win this game. I don't see... There's nothing on his team that really sets up. His Kirim's probably Specs, as we said before. His Darmanitan's probably a uh, choice scarf variant and honestly at this point uh you know what let's just go back into gligar i have no reason not to uh as he's going to double actually into his kirim which is a good play and now i feel like he's going to go for the ice move so do i go into chandelure to take the hit um well actually hold on a second if i get off an agility with empoleon don't I just win? Yeah, I'm going to Roost here. As he goes for Focus Blast again. And once again... Uh, actually, now I can Earthquake his team. So... <laughs> uh, he's trying to predict every turn. It's not working out for him. If I would have just Ice Beamed the Ampharos initially, then he would have... Uh, he would have already been dead. Um, his Kirim comes back out. At this point, I think it's going to fire off an Ice move. So I'm going to go into Chandelure, predicting that. And uh, he goes for Focus Blast once again. That's not going to do anything. And now we can just go for the Shadow Ball on whatever wants to come in. It's going to be Darmanitan, so it's going to take a little bit of damage. When I say a little bit, I mean a heck of a lot. And uh, now he's going to fire off a Rock move or a Ground move. So I'm going to go into Gligar. He's not going to U-turn. There's no way. Come on. Come on, dude. You can't just predict every turn and expect to win like that. That's not going to happen. Uh, he's going to bring in his Kirim. Again, uh, I can just go into Chandelure on this thing. And if he wants to fire off an attack... I don't have rocks up on my side anymore. I don't, I don't really care about this thing. It's definitely Specs, as you can see. Um, and... Now I can just Flamethrower? He can Ice Beam me again. That's fine. I can just go into Empoleon. I have a lot more special defense. And I can get off an Agility here. And his Ampharos is going to come out. And uh, now I'm going to go back into Gligar. <laughs> Uh, because I can't take an electric move, obviously. And I'll be able to Earthquake here and get off some more damage on something. Actually, you know what? I'm going to U-turn because if his uh, if his Kirim wanted to come out, then I would go right back out into Empoleon. But he actually chooses to stay in here. 
Uh, I guess he's going to go for the dragon type move. I'm just going to go a bomb snow. And uh, I think Blizzard into Ice Shard should be able to pick up the kill on pretty much anything. Uh, so we're going to take down the Ampharos there, as you can see with the Blizzard. And now Empoleon just wins. Sets up an agility and kills the Kiram and the uh, and the Romanitan. So that's going to be a good game. I'm just going to wait until he picks his moves. But he, like I said before, he has two choice mons left. So there's there's pretty much no way he can beat me. Uh, I'm just going to Ice Shard here. Again, he can lock himself into an Ice type move, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he's going to go for Ice Beam again. And now I'm going to go into Empoleon again. And just Flash Cannon this thing. If he goes into Darmanitan, I actually think I take it out. We'll see, but I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know how well I'm going to fare after a Life Orb hit, though. Uh, we do take out the Darmanitan, and even if we didn't, the Hail would. So, we are going to take the Hail plus the um, plus the Life Orb there. So, I'm kind of worried now, actually, about how much damage this Ice Beam is going to do. Like, we saw how much it did to Chandelure. This is also a resist, but Chandelure didn't have... How much HP do we have? 143. Chandelure has a lot less, I believe. So, Empoleon is going to be able to pick up this kill, um, I believe. Let's hope. Do we take out Kiram? Hold on a second. Empoleon. Flash Cannon. Kiram. Let's go. Kiram. Choice Specs. How much do we do to the Flash Cannon? 84 to 100. So, yeah. We're good. <laughs> um, actually, we're just, like, right on the cusp of being good. Uh, so we will fire it off here. Barring a freeze, we win. There we go. Okay, so we picked up that win. Unfortunately, that battle was longer because I had to run a bunch of Calyx that I didn't know. He's using uh, not unorthodox Pokemon, but ones that I hadn't played uh, with this team before. So I didn't really know the Calyx. Anyway, so we were able to pick up three wins. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, once again, leave a like down below. Uh, check, out, uh, check out the video in the description. It's actually a really, uh, really cool series that... Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers has going on on his channel, so if you guys want to see that. And, um, and of course, leave a comment if you have any questions, any comments, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Ciao.